watching you play, I was thinking of the Twitter bots because they seem similar, mm -hmm. at least in flavor, even. You crazy. All right, so all um, of this is to get... By the way, we're trying to get to the undersea trench so that we can get a dance that you can't get otherwise from Mog. So that's, okay. that's what we're doing. Um, and I think I think we're picking up dances from Mog by being in different environments. Oh, okay, so we're back in the belt. Yes. And then, um, but what was I going to say, Ryan? I was going to say a thing. Oh, we should have brought our, our little boy. Oh, we should have brought Gal. I kind of forgot that we'd be on the belt. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really have it in my head. Um... But anyway, it, it kind of has gotten me back to wanting to maybe try and experiment with Twine again, like I talked about probably like a bajillion years ago. But I literally just, it's not something that I really had the spoons for doing. And I'm kind of excited. The what? The spoons. Are you, have, you, are you, have you never heard of spoon theory before? I've never heard of spoons. Oh, this is like a real thing. Like, I sometimes feel a little bit like maybe I shouldn't use it, but um, it's, a, it's a theory that people have used to explain... Um, low energy reserves for people with chronic illness. Mm. Um, so it's usually, it can be like anything, like, so it's like people with like, <laughs> um, that was really cool. Like fibromyalgia or something like that, like lupus or like chronic pain or chronic fatigue. Um, and sometimes it is used by people with, with mental illnesses like anxiety disorder or depression. Mm. Um, but the idea is like, it's... It's just a metaphor to try and explain how much energy you have. Like, it's like maybe you start the day with, like, 12 spoons. Mm -hmm. And, like, there it's a limited resource, essentially. Oh. Sorry. That's <clears throat> But it's a, it's a limited resource. And you kind of have to make decisions throughout your day based on what you want to do or what you can do based on how many spoons you have. Like, so it's like maybe getting ready in the morning costs you three spoons. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, you lack energy for things later on or going out takes, like, half of them. It's just a kind of a loose metaphor. Um, but, so, I just, it take, I just really haven't had the energy to sit in or kind of, like, then try and do something like that. Like, writing takes a lot out of me. I mean, especially trying to create a Twitter bot seems like it would be trial well because you need to like code to yeah. um but twine is easy like so that's kind of what i was thinking of starting well not like easy but like it's a lot more you don't need well, to know easier how to than code. programming a twitter bot yeah. right and I, I found some templates so it, it would be things like for for a bot like you might be able to stump um text is like a basic bot but anyway i don't remember what i was talking about but like the whole idea was really cool to me um fuck there was something i wanted to point out Maybe I'll remember it. I think it was Porpentine related. Mm. It's always Porpentine related. Oh. Mog stumbled and was not able to dance. No! Getting foot tied. That's what they call it. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Yeah. I think I've just been really fascinated by that aspect of things, and I've just been getting a little bit more excited about potentially trying to write, I guess. Should do it. Which is kind of, yeah, things. I appreciate that. I've been trying to take more steps out um, of like my comfort zone. I think connecting to this, I promise. But I think one yeah. of the coolest things about No Man's Sky is that the, it's the ability for you oh, to, yeah. to apply your own sort of storytelling framework to whatever's happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've already seen someone on Reddit do a really cool thing where they were basically keeping a paper written like captain's God, log that's so fucking cool with like sketches of the plants and animals that they see and descriptions of the planets and yes you know what they've been doing there and like what they need to leave and stuff see? and sort of like oh. dramatizing the survival element and turning it into this piece of fiction that I think is just really fascinating see that is like ah it's like my absolute fucking jam I, like, I'm so much more interested in like the relationships that people have and form with games than like the like whatever story like the game designers are trying to tell, but that's it. You you reminded me of what I wanted to mention because um, I was telling you like one of my favorite game experiences was like exploring the planets on Mass in Mass Effect. Right. Um, but the only other it's kind of all loosely associated in my head. Well, the only other time that I had really used Twitter extensively is when I was like just I had dedicated one play session to just like exploring the planets, and it was I was kind of using it as like an anti anxiety thing, but um, I was using Twitter and kind of, like, in a porpentine-inspired fashion, like, instead of, because it was on the place, you know, PS3, and I don't have a way to, like, 
screenshot shit, you know, like from that. So I was just yeah. taking photos with my phone and updating them to Twitter. So it's like kind of like, um, but I would. I remember you telling me about that, and I think at the time I didn't realize that you were playing on the PS3. I thought that you were playing on the PC, and I was like, why didn't you just use screenshots? Like, oh yeah, I also kind of like the cat, like the fact that it's kind of like filtered, like it's just what is available. Like I, it's kind of appealing to me in its own way, but. It was one of, like, it changed, like, how I interacted with the game a lot, and it really made it feel special to me. Like, I was able to, like, write things in and kind of take the experience with myself because I was producing something as a result. Mm -hmm. Not quite to the, nearly the level of this person who's, like, writing out Captain Swag, but something similar. And at the fact that I could document it really was exciting for me, I guess. I don't know, but that kind of connected to the Twitter bots, which also kind of generated random microfragments, connects to No Man's Sky in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, they're kind of like this little triumvirate, and so I kind of loosely am connecting it to it, because it was one of my favorite things that I've ever done in terms of writing or using social media, and it was just right. something, I don't know, I just liked it a lot. Like, they're still out there, so I go back and just, like, there's these cool screenshots of just, like, planets landscapes and skies well i will say <coughs> the sort of landscape imagery you get in no man's sky is so much stronger than anything oh, yeah. in mass effect no but it's like, like it's like if somebody took that little piece because mass effect could be really repetitive yes which is why kind of what i was doing is like it was to some sense in some sense a boring aspect of mass effect you know what i mean but i like to just like i was like sna snagging fragments that were interesting like this planet has a double moon or you know what i mean right. like um, some of them look different and they weren't and that was just like the fun part for me and it seems like they took that aspect of Mass Effect and made a whole game out of it with yeah. like way more depth and that like just blows up my mind yeah there's definitely I don't know there's so many interesting things that you can see that yeah I mean I've never seen in another game like where you can see you're on a, a, a moon of a larger planet, and that planet sure. has another moon. And oh. you stand, and you see on the horizon the smaller moon, and then the big planet, and yeah. they like sort of eclipse each other. God, you can actually see like you know regular old solar eclipses, and, yeah. You know, and not to mention all the more the more bizarre things that you can find, like see? atlas fragments and stuff. I think are I, really really fascinating, Ryan, and the sort of storytelling uh -huh. that those provide. My dream, because it seems like there's limitations to the sorts of things you can find, but my dream is that they would, like, continue to add content to this, which I'm, I can't imagine that they won't in some sense, but, like, if they, I, it seems like you could continually add new things, like, right now it doesn't seem like there's really aspects of civilization in terms of, like, cities or ruins or, like, but imagine... There's just some ruins, but not, like, cities. No, but I'm talking about, like, they're huge planets, like, it would be so cool if eventually they added, like, um space so that an individual planet could have multiple biomes mm -hmm. or like there were aspects of settlement and imagine if there were settlements that there were aspects of um like time you know what i mean or development so it's like an early primitive civilization or it's like a hyper you know hyper technological civilization even if it was kind of like canned in the way that you could interact with them a la like daggerfall or something mm -hmm. like that um i just think it would be so cool to like be able to wander around alien cities and then different, like, architectural sets. Like, I feel like they could, like, expand on that shit, like, in really cool ways. Yeah, I think part of the problem in No Man's Sky is that that's the kind of thing where one of the biggest problems for No Man's Sky in general is that yeah. people have these ideas and expectations of for what, what could, can could be in it, and it isn't there, and so they're always, like, disappointed. Like... Yeah, People yeah. who were expecting more of a building aspect where you could... Uh, what? what is this oh my god, go down that hole into the trench. Oh, this is how I get to this treasure. Um, and so, yeah. you know, people have expressed disappointment because there isn't stuff like that. Like whole alien cities or city worlds. Yeah. Or the ability to build your own, you know, structures yeah. and stuff. But to me, it's like... It flies in the face of what No Man's Sky is a little bit because each planet yeah. is meant to be, you know, very impermanent. You're not supposed to spend hours right. and hours on a single planet. Like, you can. There's a small reward in place for like documenting all the fauna, but like to right. me, it's like that's you know, there's just there's so much more to see. There's uh, it, however many quintillion planets. Like, yeah, yeah. Just go to another one. Like, it, like there will be else. so much variation. I, when I think about it, because like. On one hand, I, I feel excited about what's possible, even though 
it might not necessarily be in the game. You know what I mean? But I don't really feel like at this point I'm the kind of gamer that I would hold it against that. You know what I mean? Like, because there's so much already there. It's more like a kind of lights my imagination than anything else. Right. Did I get whatever dance I was supposed to get? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was that even in the trench? That was definitely the trench, but like... Water Rondo? But I had that when I started it. Oh. I mean, I had that before I went in the trench, rather. Whoa. I think I got it on the river. Mm. Maybe that was the one you are supposed to get. Yeah, I'm going to look this up real quick. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, I got it. Okay. So we were supposed to get the Water Rondo from the under the trench, but we got it from the river instead, and that's one of the places you can oh. get it. So. so that's what we needed? So we got it. Okay, cool. We got what we needed. So but, we need to take the figure. But you know what I'm saying, Ryan? Did you hear what I was saying? Basically... I don't know that they heard what you were saying, because I may cut out stuff that had no screen content. Oh, okay. Because it's an LP. <laughs> well, I guess, basically what I was saying is that um, not all of this stuff is new, like, Bethesda had done... And there's probably other people who have done this, too, like, tons more, but obviously, like, roguelikes and stuff do procedural content generation. Right. Um, but, like, um, in terms of, like, graphical areas to explore... Um, like, Daggerfall, I think, did that, if I'm remembering correctly. Like, I know Morrowind had a very large world, oh, too, but... What? I don't know where... I'm trying to get back to my fucking airship. Oh. I don't remember how. Anyway, sorry. Like, random know. generation is... I mean, in Diablo and shit, there's, like, tons of things that did that. But the idea of, like, expanding rather than, like, repeating... Right, um, yeah. Daggerfall did it. But I think, like, the you know, the criticism is always that, like, at a certain point, like, the variation is kind of meaningless because all the places you go to look the same. And I think No Man's Sky probably expands on that in a lot of ways, even if it's missing, quote-unquote, lots of pieces. But I think that's the exciting part, is that it's like, it, it makes you ask, like, what else could we do with games instead of just, like, you know, oh, it has a good story. Right. Um, and it's like, look at all this shit. Like, and like you were saying, I feel like part of the joy of that is just going and seeing, like, that little animal that we saw that was walking around on its legs like it was. Yeah, and, and I think... It was so people, fucking cool. There have been some complaints about, you know, how hmm. quickly you'll see stuff repeated, and it's true. Like, hmm. I saw stuff on my second planet that was just, like, recolors of stuff I saw on my first planet. But okay. I've also seen stuff that, like, we just saw this morning that I had never seen before. Never, ever. Yeah. I had no idea what it was. All right, so I can go through... Yeah, I mean, there was a moment you are like, I don't know, this has never happened to me before. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. heard a distress signal and, like, pirates were attacking us. Well, I had, I had had that happen. Um, I had, it, there was a distress signal and pirates were attacking a freighter, and I learned from my first experience, don't fuck with don't the fuck pirates, with pirates because they're going to murder you, but... It, it also gives me, like, Metroid vibes and shit, like, you're, like, you know, like, a lone individual just flying your, like, personal ship through space, like... And it, it is quiet in the same way. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Minimal dialogue and... Very little of it is spoken. There's there's some aliens uh, that speak, but they don't speak English. The the other the other kind of like thing that it felt like to me was like four X games. Yeah, I mean because four X games kind of are like that too, right? Like yeah. like it's it's more about your experience of the of the particular mechanics, which are different in those games than they are in No Man's Sky. But like kind of there's like a series of very alien looking creatures that you can interact with in a visual sense. Um, but, like, it's almost like instead of, like, exploring tech trees, like, you're landing on planets and shit. Like, I don't know. It, 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 it encapsulates a similar spirit and sense of imagination that is really fascinating to me. Also, I just love space and the idea of exploring That's space. That's part of it, too, is that having a game that lets me just freely explore space like that. Yeah. I, I really love it. It's something I've, I've always yes. loved and enjoyed and is rare to actually have the opportunity opportunity to do. I know! So. It's, like, one of the key images, like, in my, like, brain's imagination. Like, the like the idea of, like, being able to, like, ex like explore space and, like, ab like, abandoned planets and stuff like that. It's just, like, it's so, like, my pulp jam. Like, I just... I'm kind of, like, in love with it. Like, legit in love with it. Like, it's so good. The even wilder pieces, like, you know, sometimes you'll find abandoned manufacturing facilities that are, like, overrun oh, cool. with, like, an organic infection in the building Shit. itself and stuff. Like, you just see all kinds of wild stuff that's just really cool. And, like, you're sort of, like, following the path of another adventurer yeah. who has been going to these places and, like, their mind is getting infected by this infection yeah. in their system and stuff. I love There's the lots idea. of little stories like that. Implicit storytelling and storytelling in fragments. Like... I, I think it can be so much more powerful in in many ways. Like, especially when you're trying to build something like this. That's what just seeing a snapshot of No Man's Sky seems like it is probably, you know, 
like, no pun intended, light years ahead of something like uh, <laughs> Daggerfall or something, because it seems like they have populated it with lots of little fragments. Like, when Ryan and I were playing, we happened upon, like, what, an alien monolith? Yeah. And it said, like, don't release the abomination, like, but you probably can if you melt it with X or something. Yeah, you, it, oh, you're so presented the... with the choice, and your understanding of the alien language right, it's... helps inform whether or not you're going to free the Which thing or not. Which is fucking cool. And in that case, we left it alone because, like, I had you some trusted. words in my in my vocabulary for, like, what it was warning us you about. You actually just had, like, the word beware, and we're like, okay, maybe we shouldn't fucking do yeah, that. Yeah, and it was the right choice. It rewarded me for not releasing the thing inside. But look how fucking cool the idea of it is. Just, yeah. like, like, how much world building is suggested by that one particular thing. There was a race of something here, or somebody was here that trapped something because it was terrifying, or like any number of possible reasons why that's possible. But doesn't that just like fire your imagination way more than just like some boring interaction like in so many other games? I don't know. I'm like really excited I mean, <laughs> that's the thing is that I, I like all kinds of things that games do. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, No Man's Sky is a really different take on from what I've been playing lately, which are more narrative games, especially since we've been playing so much Final Fantasy. True. You true, know, true, true, it, true. it's like a really different sort of experience. And it is. The thing is, I value both ends of the spectrum. I, I value highly narrative experiences that are very railroaded because they're trying to tell you a story. Absolutely. And I also like this kind of just emergent storytelling or like, mm -hmm. you know, basically I, you just putting your own story on top of yes. it with some minimal input from the game. I think I'm more interested in the kind of emergent or implicit narrative style, only because I feel like it is less represented in, like, AAA and mainstream development. Yeah. Um, so, like, when I see something like this, I tend to get really excited, even though I still like the narrative style of game design, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, part of the thing with, um, the fuck was I just going to do? It's part of the thing with No Man's Sky in particular is that the dev studio is tiny, like the, it's, yeah. it's not really a triple A game, even though it's gotten some triple A coverage, right? Because and that's it's, it's produced by a studio of like ten people. Or something. I mean, yeah, it's bonkers. And the fact that they were able to produce it's so this cool. work is just kind of mind boggling. It's fucking staggering. Like I don't know, it's so good. It is a very good game. I think also like you're probably right too. Like I'm, I don't want to like overvalue like my personal affinity for these sorts of things and make them objective. Like it's never my intent. But I think I tend to really like like the kind of first person walker well, exploring style and, and, game. And that was the thing is that I knew that, and I know that you have that preference, and that's why mm -hmm. you know I wanted you to see it because yeah. I think it is the kind of game that like I mean it might even be therapeutic for you, mm -hmm. like to be able to. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Uh, for me, anyway. Yeah. I have wanted to keep going back to it because it is the kind of game where I don't ever get frustrated. Like, I don't know. Exactly. It's, it's a positive experience for me and, oh you know, sort of a uh, way to, you know, disburden yourself of, like, stress and yeah. anxiety and just, like, wander oh. around pretty planets and look for cool stuff and never really feel punished, you know. I really like that. I... I know. I, I don't really know what I'm trying to say there, but oh, I think I think it is. I get you. I think there are definitely people for whom that game is like absolutely therapeutic. Like it could yeah. help them work through personal problems, and well, you know, I think that kind of value yeah. in the game it can't be overstated. Like well, Ryan, like I told you, I I, I think that was like explicitly. I sat down to try and play. Mass Effect that way, right? Yeah. And and that was exactly like part of why it was so valuable to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I was trying to articulate, like, so when I was trying to write my initial bookish piece, like, I went way overboard and I like rewrote and rewrote this piece that ended up being like five times too long, and I just ended up just shelving it and having that just be like a thing that helped me work out some ideas. But like, I might have talked to you about this before, but I kind personally consider it an aspect of OCD, the just need for me when I conceptualize anything or think about things to be very totalizing and black and white. Like, right. I need to, like, have a complete understanding of something in order to feel comfortable with it. But to kind of counteract that, which can be a, in, that feeling which is incredibly stressful because most of the time that's not just, it doesn't connect in a meaningful way to how life is, you know what I mean? Right. Um, it's, it's a, like, this inability to tolerate in, ambiguity or uncertainty or fragments. It's kind of in being very intentional about 
I don't really know how to describe it, but being very intentionally about intentional about fragmentary experiences, or like expressing things in fragments, or giving myself permission to not like try and totalize things or come up with theories of explanation. Right. And so games like that, which don't follow that path, where, where I can just kind of have this like vast multiplicity of like a lot of different things that overlap and variations is really comforting to me. But the thing is that I think it's inherently impossible unless you're a dev to understand the totality of No Man's right. Sky. And that's why I think it sort of helps defeat aspects of, you know, mental processing of, of information mm-hmm. and, and, you know, what you need to be able to do. Like, for sure. me, it's like destroying a part of me that's highly completionist. Sure. Because the game just doesn't permit it. Like, it's impossible. You can never complete No Man's Sky. Right. You can... There, maybe there's a way to trigger a credit sequence, but you'll never see everything. It's just not possible. And the, there's the simple fact that there's going to be, you know rare planet types and stuff yes. that other people will see that maybe you won't ever have the privilege. Like, I've seen some screenshots of stuff that I think is really fascinating. And that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. These, like, water worlds, these worlds that are covered in oh, strange structures, oh or worlds that are covered in, in weird plant life, it's or like, oh dinosaur goodness. planets, or whatever. Like it's I want to impact on me. I want to find those things, but at the same time, I just want to find my thing. Exactly. Like, I'm not going to be able to find everything that, that they found. I'm having trouble, too, like, just from a personal affinity point of view, like, I'm just trying to work this thought out, but, like, where I find kind of narrative pressure and linearity, sometimes I can find, it can be really stressful to me, so I think the idea where I'm not pressured at all, Mm -hmm. um, and I can just explore at my own pace and build something out of it myself, helps me because it helps to facilitate the kind of thinking that helps counteract my anxiety and OCD. Do you know what I mean? Like, if that makes sense? Like, because I feel like... Like, when I was writing that piece, just as an example, I'm, I don't know how to articulate it entirely, but, like, I was trying to introduce myself, but there were, like, all the... It was, that's all it was. It was, like, an introduction, but it, as I was writing it, and after, in retrospect, I was like, shit, this is, like, really exemplary of, like, what OCD does to me. But, like, it then ended up being way too long. I went over it over and over and over again. I was anxious about it for days until I finished it and gave myself permission to shelve it, which is a step that I have, probably would not have been able to do years ago. Um... But I had to, like, express as concisely as possible and as thoroughly as possible a bunch of these aspects of my thought, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. to try and feel like it had done a reasonable job um, of it. But that is also why I was, I guess, like, connecting to all of this, why I felt Twitter has been so comforting, because it forces you to exist in, like, tiny fragments, and you can create threads... But I like the idea that they kind of also just kind of disappear or, you know, you can conjure them up again. Right. Like, but it, it's in pieces. And you can keep visiting back. It can be very iterative and, and, and variation, you know, and exist in variations. That is, like, so all I know right now, like, in, in terms of thinking about this is that I find that so exciting and also therapeutic that that can be the approach instead of trying to come up with a whole or, like, a final piece. You right. know what I mean? I'm sorry, I've been blabbing a lot, but it's just it's been something I've really been thinking about and thinking about how Twitter operates as a social media platform, how Twitter bots operate in terms of producing art or found art, and how something like No Man's Sky works all kind of connect for me in my head. So they they just seem really important to me. Um, I don't know. I've had a lot of I've been in a lot of weird brain spaces lately. I'm just trying to like work it out for myself. That seems perfectly reasonable. Yeah, thanks.